fun. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I have a very special guest, Julian Chua, professional boxing coach, um, someone who's helped me a lot on my boxing journey, and I'm bringing on to share with you guys my audience so you can get inside of his head because there is a very small percentage of people who have access to the type of athletes as Julian does, and he coached these guys in, in the cultivating a winning mindset that I think translates not just from boxing, but to life in general. So, Julian, thank you for joining me. Um, I guess, in your own words, what do you, what do, you do with your life, man? What, what, how do you title yourself? Well, first of all, my pleasure. I'm grateful to be on the channel. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a boxing coach, professional boxing coach, and, uh, there's a lot that goes, uh, into that, you know, it's not just making sure that they're physically fit, which is a huge part of their mindset, right? You don't want a fighter going into a fight, not thinking he did everything he needed to do to prepare properly for the fight. But, you know, you, you also have, um, the, the strategy. So you're a strategist as well. You have, mm -hmm. You have to get into their psyche. Some guys are more confident than others. Some guys need to be a little bit humble. They also get a little careless, but it's a case by case basis. So, um, a boxing coach trainer is a lot of. There's a lot of jobs in that job. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, um, yeah. So, uh, quickly explain explain to everyone how you got into to boxing personally, because I think it's a really interesting story, and you don't have to go deep into the weeds, but I think it gives some good context. Like me when I was fighting or me when um, Yeah, you were fighting and then how did you become a boxing coach? Because a lot of people will look at you and be like, yo, this guy is so young. How is he coaching? Why isn't he still fighting, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I fought as an amateur. I did. I did. A, I had a very short uh, career compared to a lot of others, just fighters with hundreds of fights. But um, I didn't have that many bouts, but uh, I was good enough in – some people's eyes to get an opportunity to move to Los Angeles, California to try to compete in the Olympics um, under uh, the Philippine team because uh, I'm half Filipino, half Chinese. Uh, and they thought that I had the skills to do it, but I just was very green. Like I had no one teaching me how to box. So um, I didn't really, and it's funny because I, I thought I knew what I was doing because I had like this a little bit of experience. But when I came to Wildcard and got to train under Freddie Roach, Eric Brown, some great trainers, coach world champions, um, I, I found out there's so much more, you know. And um, that was a real honor and real privilege to be around the Wildcard at that time. I uh, actually I never ended up even uh, I never competed in the Olympics. Never got to go to the trials. Never did any of those things. I kept fracturing my hands. I fought out here a couple of times, but I kept fracturing my hands in training and um, like over and over and over. And it just wasn't for me. Fighting wasn't for me. Like I got at a different plan, you know. So I believe that he set me on my journey. Now um, I worked as a strength coach for a little while. Uh, Cause I always knew how to get, I knew always knew shape and, I, and a, a lot of times strength coaches don't understand that strength conditioning is uh, not, a, is an important part of boxing. Don't get me wrong, but a lot of them don't understand it's extremely supplementary. It's not as important as the game plan uh, technique um, things like things like that. You know, a lot of times they have a tendency of like um, thinking that their role is more important than the actual sport. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I just, I, that's why a lot of coaches liked me as a strength coach, because I understood that already. I understood that it's about boxing, but the reason why I didn't like strength and condition, I had no passion for strength and conditioning though. Like every time I broke my hand, I would do strength training. And every time I uh, was healed, I went back to fighting. So I knew that my heart wasn't in that. And then basically, long story short, after my last handbrake and I was deciding to cut, pull the plug on boxing, Freddie Roach asked me if I wanted to work at um, a gym called Wildcard West in Santa Monica, which is now Churchill Boxing Club. Um, and that's where I started my journey as a, as, a, as a coach for regular people. And then I got my first fighter. He started winning. 
that brought attention to the next and the next and the next and now i'm where i'm at yeah and so where you're at for people that don't have context on julian is uh you're working at wildcard now once again came full circle and a lot of people know that name if you know boxing it's uh freddie roach's gym and and you and you and freddie are working basically side by side with the number of fighters now right yes we we could we, i have my uh stable of my own fighters but uh freddie and i um work together on some some great great talented kids and uh and gr grown men i say kids like I'm, it's weird because i'm their age or younger or, but um group of uh great men and um it's a wonderful time great experience yeah so tell me what it was like for you to make that transition from a fighter to a coach to like being behind the scenes um like what was that transition for you how did you do it how did you switch your mindset from like i'm the fighter to now i'm behind the fighter it it was it was very difficult you know i mean even when i was a child i i like i never really loved like the intelligent guys in like comics and animes and stuff like that like i was like the the soldier the, like the badass you know the guy who's like out on the front line and it was very very strange for me to go into into that mindset of like switching switching off um but i kind of just like i've always wanted to leave a legacy of some sort and um since like boxing was just taking too much of my heart honestly it was like a almost like a forced transition that i fell in love with you know i, I started um like I said, I did the strength and conditioning and I always wanted to fight instead of do like babysit these fighters, make sure they're running and stuff like that. And a huge thing was like, if the game plan was wrong and the techniques were wrong, it didn't matter how well a shape I got my guy in at the top level, everyone's in shape. But for me, um, when, when I got my first win as a professional boxing coach, oh, sorry, sorry. Even when I started training clients, I, I, a part of me was like, I need to fight. I, 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 this isn't me. I need to fight. This is, this is not me. I'm not a, I'm not a coach for regular people that are just, you know, not, no disrespect to that, but you guys, you know what I mean, you know, but, um, when I got my first professional win, it was just different as a, as a head coach, not a strength coach. I got, I had plenty of wins as a strength coach, but as head coach, it was just different, you know, and that, that sparked a, a whole new passion that I've, I've ran with. Yeah. And it's exciting to watch you just from afar and see how you've been able to continue to grow and get the attention of more fighters and more people want to work with you. And obviously guys like Freddie putting their trust in you, wanting you to work with their guys and putting a lot of that weight on your shoulders because they see what you're capable of. And so I think it'd be really interesting for people to understand like, what does a professional boxer do at this time? Because sorry, a professional boxing coach do at this time? Because I think the key to your success is how I know you spend your time. So like tell people we're in the coronavirus, so it's just a little different right now, but on a normal day, what do your days look like? Well, I'm, I'm up, I get to the gym before it opens or right at opening and I am there until that gym closes. Uh, when I worked at Churchill, Lockhart West, I was there, I had the key to that place. So I was there before normal hours there after hours, you know, there's nothing like, there's nothing like time, you know, um, another huge, uh, I'll tell you all the keys to my, the success that I've had. Number two, I, I treated every single client that I had, like they were getting ready for like a title, you know, when it came to really taking care of their technique, you know, one of my hobbies is I love to sketch and like fixing technique is like art. It's like, you know, you do the ear and then after you do the ear, you do the nose and then you realize the proportions are off. So you got to erase a little bit. And, you know, I, I, um, as a, as a professional boxing coach, the more you can fix normal people, the more, like when you go to the fighters, it's just like, you're just on, you can just flip, like, you know, you can help them with so much. And, and you're teaching these clients how to, how to throw these punches that are so sharp and so fast and, and so with so much power, and then you get a guy who has been throwing, who has, who throws harder than that, but he's been throwing it wrong his whole life. Then he, he, he puts it all together and it's just like, he, you see the, the change and it's, and you, 
you, they get addicted to it because at the end of the day, they want to win, right? So, um, but yeah, my days, my that's that's another key is training the clients like like they're real fighters. Um, kind of like how you and, do one thing is how you do everything, right? Exactly. Yeah, your heart's in it or it's not. Period. Um, and then, uh, and the the most important that's probably the most when it comes to like fixing technique, and then when it comes to like moves and studying and game plans and 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 things of that nature, I I study. That's that is one thing that is so underrated. That's so underrated is is studying. You mean we live in a day and age where you can literally watch any fight you want on YouTube, like on your phone you don't even need to be home you can go you can you know watch whatever you want you know so making sure that i'm studying and and then taking things that i know that my guys can apply that it's not just you know this guy's super talented and he can do he can do this so it doesn't mean your guy can do it and your guy can execute it you got to be realistic you have to try and drill it see if it, he's catching on to it and then you know make adjustments or it's it's a very complicated um it's a very complicated job. And if you don't think so, it's, you're wrong. You know, you, 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 there's, there's so much more you can be doing to, to, um, to make your fighters better concepts to give them for them to build into their own creativity, you know? Um, but yeah, the, these are the things that I don't think a lot of people do. They don't spend the whole day in the gym, go home and then watch boxing. You know, it's like, it's just a overload. And then, when I'm when I do feel that burnout, which sometimes I do, like that overload, I like to do things that are still kind of relative to my sport. So I'll play video games that are, you know, player versus player, where it's strategy and you have to outthink the other person and positioning, just things like that. And it keeps my mind sharp as well. It's it's uh combat's combat, you know, once you understand war deception you know, setups, decoys, it all, it's all the same when it comes to combat. Yeah. And so how long have you been, uh, coaching boxing now? I have been coaching boxing for seven years, 2013, seven years. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've been able to condense your time of learning because it's just about volume of time, like 6 a.m. to like 9 p.m. at night, probably like every single day. And I know that you're going on the weekends. And so a lot of people are looking for fighters or even coaches. They're like, how do I become better? It's like, there's no secrets, right? Nothing. You know, it's funny. Um, well, I'll, 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 I'll t tell you one thing and I'll tell you the another thing. Um, the first thing is that like, I, I don't go out. Like I don't have a, like my social life's in the gym, you know, I, I don't, I don't go out. I don't party. I mean, I, I'm not going to say I'm a saint and I don't drink every now and then I have a beer and stuff like that. But, um, I, I spend my days, yeah. Studying like, like the hard work, the hard work, there's, there's really no substitute. And this ties into the next thing I was going to tell you, I am fortunate enough to get to see Manny Pacquiao train every day that he's in camp and he's in LA and he's training. I work very closely with Freddie. So I get to watch Manny train. And, you know, it's funny because at the end of uh, most of his fights, they're asking Manny these questions like, Oh, you did this and did this. What? He always has the same response. And it's, I trained very hard for this fight. I trained very hard for this fight. And when I was younger and I didn't know Manny and never saw him, I always thought he just didn't understand English. And he was just kind of like, oh, I just trained hard for this fight. When I saw this man train, Brandon, when I saw this man train, I thought in my head, I have never trained hard in my life. Mm. This guy goes so hard. Like it's, 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 it's mind boggling that he's, he's 40 years old. And he, like, I don't see young guys train this hard, train as hard as him. Like, he goes off for, like, two hours. And there's no, there's no, like, messing around, or walking around, talking. Like, he's blasting for, for two hours. You know, if you watch any guys, like, even pros on a heavy bag, they'll let off, like, a big combination on a bag, take a step back, they'll catch their breath, they'll walk around the bag a little bit. 
this guy will blitz like a 10 punch combination on the bag, like step back and he's on his toes. He's moving, he's moving. He'll blitz back in, let another six punch combination turn, let another four punch combination step back. He's just never, it's crazy. When he says he trains hard, that man trains hard, hard, like a different kind of hard than what you're used to seeing. Yeah. And so it's that effort and it sounds like it's also that intention he puts into everything, right? He's always being intentional. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that's something I learned from you. So Julian just launched, you guys can check this out. It's linked in the description below, uh, his new prize fighter university, uh, boxing program. I'm going through this and I'm advancing so fast in my boxing skills because you're forcing me to actually put so much intention into everything I do, into a combination, how I throw a punch. And it just kind of woke me up to, hey bro, you've been boxing for like three or four years, but you haven't really been doing shit. <laughs> because like, when I saw the intention I could be putting into it, I was like, this is how you get good. Yeah, yeah. And so. Following, following the fundamentals and, and then, um, yeah, making sure, and that, that's very important that, uh, there, there's good coaching out there, you know, like a bad coach can ruin, can ruin a lot of guys. So that's, I feel like that's a huge responsibility on me as well. Cause these men are trusting me with, with their lives, you know, yeah. their lives. And speaking to you as a coach, what I think is really interesting is I'm sure a lot of people want to know, Hey, what's the best way to coach? But my conversation with you is that the best way to coach is different for every fighter, right? Do you want to talk about that? How you need to always be kind of looking at the fighter and personalizing your game plan, whether it be mentally or physically for this person. Okay. So yeah, that's a very complicated, that's a very complicated subject because you have to be, you have to be, you have to understand what's within your fighter's capabilities. You know, you have to know their weaknesses. This also comes down to matchmaking. You know, especially as you're coming up, like if, if my guy doesn't have a hard time with like tall fighters, you know, I'm not going to, if, if we get presented a fight against a tall guy and I don't think he's ready for it, we're not going to take it, you know, because at the end of the day, it's a business and you want to leave that sport with, with a little bit of, with, you know, money. Um, but when it comes to like, yeah, the, the mindset of, of every fighter, it's, it's like I said, it's very case by case. Game plan is case by case. Of course, there's outlines and there's, that's why it's important to study because you understand blueprints and how to deal with certain things, how to deal with pressure, how to deal with guys who move, how to deal with guys who are, you know, very uh, good with blocking or very good with their head movement, how to trick, how to trick guys into certain like bad places, guys who are, you, you get the point, like, but it, like I said, it's boxing. It's not one size fits all. You know, you have to take so many things into account. You know, even even where it's at. If it's at the guy's hometown, you probably have to knock him out. Uh, what uh, what do the judges like at a, at a higher level fight? You know, you have to see. You know, okay, these are our judges for the fight. And if you watch them judge before, they really like aggressive guys. So that may change our game plan, right? We may need to be more aggressive. Because these judges that we have like those like those things, right? But, um, but yeah, that's that's um, that that's when it comes to game plan. When it comes to like their men, their mentality, like it, again, it's all case by case. It's like it it's like there's no one one rule for like you know women. You know, you, you, you girls are like the girls are different, and you know. They were some respond to some things, some respond to others. It's just like they're people, you know, they're individuals. But it's very important to know how to manage training and, and the mental state. If someone's like way too overconfident, hey, you know, just don't be too, like, you, 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 you keep his confidence high. Like, yeah, this guy doesn't belong in the ring with you, but follow the proper steps, you know, break him down with the jab. Don't get hit with nothing silly. You know, don't don't walk into a punch over walking walk into a punch overconfident. It's it's like you have to keep them on the keep these guys on the line, right? Some like confidence and, and humility, like like your cockiness and humility, confidence is in like the middle. You want to keep them confident, you know. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different tactics to the to to keeping a guy like that too. You have to know. So funny. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling, but um, like some guys, like I have one kid that 
um, I keep saying kid, he's like a year, like a same age as me or a year older or younger. But um, he, he doesn't respond well to like, hey man, we can do this, you know, you're better than this guy. He responds to street stuff. He's from the hood, you know, you can't, you can't talk to him like, you can't motivate him through like, like, you know, regular like, lingo you have to be like man fuck like or like you know bleep this dude blah 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 blah, blah. you know you have to get him in that mindset and he he gets it you know it's different so you really have to spend time with your with your men and you have to like understand how to how to keep them in in the right place because they're all different yeah and that's really interesting and then talk to me about confidence because how important is confidence in boxing and is it the same thing? Does everyone gain confidence in different ways or is it more about just getting experience, getting positive experiences? How, how do you build confidence? Well, confidence, confidence is, is like one of the most important things in boxing. If you think the guy's better than you and the guy can beat you before you even get in there, you, you, you've already lost. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and overconfidence is, can be a terrible thing because it could um, make a guy not train as hard, you know. And, lie, and we've seen this many times in our sport where someone is way more talented but doesn't the, take the guy seriously and the guy who isn't is just tough and just comes at him and pulls off an upset, you know. Um, but, yeah, so com- that, that confidence is, is extremely, extremely important to be able to manage, you know. Um, uh, to say the second part of your question again. Um, so how how do you believe is the best way for a, a boxer coming up to start to build their confidence? Train hard. Train hard. Yeah. When you go in there and you're and you're like, I've done what I'm I've done what I've needed to do. Train hard and trust your coach. Mm. Which means as a coach, you better trust yourself. You know because. If you do everything you're supposed to do and you trust the people behind you, there's no reason why you should fail. Mm. And, I mean, there is winning and losing. And in the event you do, you can hold your head up high because you know you did everything you could. You don't want to you don't want to go into you don't want to lose a fight that you're supposed to win. And you're like, man, I should have ran. You know, I didn't run. I didn't diet. I didn't. I was drinking. I was partying with my friends. And it's like, I wasn't, didn't do what I was supposed to do. And I ruined it. You know, it's much it's easier to live without that. regret. Yeah. And what would you tell uh, a young fighter who's coming up, who maybe he doesn't have the best, best coaching right now, or maybe he's just like, man, I want to be a boxer, but I don't know what steps to take. You know, maybe he just like searched on YouTube, how to become a boxer or something like that. Right. Like, what would you tell someone who's getting started who wants to, climb the ladder and, and get to level that some of the fighters are that, that you're coaching. I would say download prize fighter. You know? <laughs> yeah. <no doubt. laughs> um, I would say, yeah, no, I mean, I would say go and try to get the best information you can that makes sense to you. Study a lot of fights, you know, I'm dead serious though too. Like, yeah, download prize fighter university. Um, Watch, watch the videos, try to mimic and listen to the things that I'm saying. Um, there's so much more to it. I didn't obviously expose everything that, that I know, but you know, there's enough there for you to get started. Um, I think that uh, go to a boxing gym, obviously, find a coach, ask your coach a lot of questions. Don't just, he should know answers. If he's a good, if he's a good coach, he should know answers. He might not know every answer, but he should be telling you why he's doing certain things. So so you can you can understand things because people learn so much faster if they understand. I believe that there are lessons in this game that you have to learn the hard way, right? There's no way you're going to become a champion without actually getting in and sparring, and getting your head rocked around, okay? But there's nothing, you know, there's no reason why so, someone should, no one has learned faster without the right knowledge being given to them. Mm-hmm. right no, no one's ever like learned faster because this guy didn't say the right thing you know like ask your coach questions and then last but not least i'll say it again train hard train hard train as hard as you can yeah so one of the, the last things i want to ask you about was how 
how fighters can deal with fear, right? Like I remember the first time I went in for sparring, uh, like, you know, you just have a pit in your stomach. And mm -hmm. like, I personally just like never, in the beginning especially, wasn't performing as well as sparring because I was like mm -hmm. a deer in the headlights. I was just afraid. Mm -hmm. And of course, with experience, that becomes easier. But I don't know, do you have any advice for people who are trying to get over the fear of boxing? Um, yeah. Uh, I think that there's a couple ways to go about it. Again, you know, that like everybody's different. Like uh, I had never sparred before my first fight. So I got thrown into a shark tank. I have no idea how they even box really. I just went in there and started fighting for my life. Like I got in the ring, I was like, can't go back now. You know, I can't say, I don't wanna do this anymore. I'm already like, I walked right in there and ended up like, you know, kicking his ass. Um, but- Did you win the whole tournament? Yeah, it was in the uh, Indiana Golden Gloves. Yeah, and um, but um, I I learned to control the fear because I was forced to. You know, um, now that I've learned more, um, I think I, I like it's important that you start your guy off with spar drills. I love I love spar drilling. Like if you're new, if you're new, you go in there with you. You have you have your coach put you in there with a guy maybe with a lot with more experience well not maybe with a guy with more experience maybe a pro that that isn't gonna blast you out you know a, a, a pro that's controlled he's not crazy you know and you learn how to you know you say okay only use your jab only use your jab and parry with your backhand so the drill is you jab he jabs you try to catch so you start to learn how to establish your jab and how to pick a jab off Right then, then now, okay, now you're gonna try to throw your one two, and 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 the pro is just gonna dodge it. And then while you're throwing your one two, you're gonna see how hard it is to hit a professional boxer, and they're sitting there picking your shots up. And you, you you see him, and you mimic. You're like, oh wow, you know. And then when your coach is like, you see how relaxed he is, and oh oh oh, everything you were telling me before, it's making sense, it's making sense, you know, stuff like that. So I think if you have, yeah, if there's a good pro there or um if not a good pro maybe somebody you're starting out with who you can have a conversation with like like uh two spar drills with them controlled sparring set uh spar drills and um big advice for you if you're the if you're the new guy trying it out and you're moving around with a pro or your friend or whatever don't start trying to hit him hard do what your coach is telling you learn how to snap the jab Learn how to catch a jab. Don't go out there and start trying to bomb him with your left hand or try to bomb him with shots because he's going to tune you up. If you start like trying to go hard on him, he's going to it's going to slow you down. Mm -hmm. I've done it. I mean, I've done it to people before. You know, like yeah. like this guy thinks he's way too hot. You know, and and this is what this is what they do. This is what we do. You know, like um, so yeah. Start and then then from there you build on. You you start boxing guys your own level. And, go get into free sparring where there's no drill it's like sparring and then jump into a fight but so basically uh my method is handle the fear in increments mm. whereas the method that i was given was like here drink out of the fire hose you know it was just funny Ooh, it was scary um but i had the best time and the best time while it was not while it was happening so um yeah awesome man great advice uh, I definitely just threw myself in there and just got yeah. a little bit <laughs> in the yeah, a little. About it, but, but then you realize, okay, I think like you realize, oh, okay, I'm not going to die. Like in my sparring session. That's, right. That's absolutely my, right. That's the thing is. Yeah. With my 16 ounce gloves, I'm not going to die in here. And I was really trying. Yeah, you think, like, it's funny when you've never taken a punch before, really, like, like you've like stubbed your toe before and like, you've like, you know, like maybe your buddies like 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 hit you in your arm or your stomach. You're like, man, do I want to get hit in the face? You don't you don't really know what that is gonna feel like. And then after it's happened a couple of times, you know, you're like, mm, it's not the worst thing, you know. And then then you start getting confident, and like you are okay. I'm mean, trying to dodge this because like I'm not scared of it, you know. And that's actually a, a funny thing is like if you watch like the spectrum of boxing, you got guys who are brand new. That care to like are like a, you can feign them and they're gonna be like all over the place and then 
you get a like an old old vet who should have retired a while ago. You can feign him; he's not moving. You know, you could just hit him with literally every shot and just eating him. You know, and then so you you never want to be here and you never want to be here. You want to always care, but like not care. You know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt, man. Absolutely. So to wrap things up, I feel like. The, you know, the, the big principles that you've talked about are nothing's going to replace hard work. You know, there's, there's, there's a reason why Manny Pacquiao is 40 years old and he just won, you know, another belt. Uh, beyond hard work, um, do you have any other like parting piece of advice for people who are, maybe they're amateurs, maybe they are. We do have some professional boxers who follow this channel as well. Um, who are, you know, if they're not in LA um, and they just want some advice from Julian, like what, what would you tell them? There's a lot of things, but I'm trying to think of one, the, the parting gift. The parting gift. And then we can shout out and I'll tell everyone what you have going on besides this. But as far as your, your boxing philosophy, your boxing mind, I'm just trying to get in there as much as possible before I leave you. I would say for young boxers and stuff like that, and. Um, get get make sure you really get a good team behind you. you no, know, no, don't get don't you don't get there alone. And make sure you thank them. You know your your man your manager if he does a good job, your promoter if he does a good job, your 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 coach if he does a good job, strength coach. You know it's not a one man thing. It's not a one man. Even though you're alone in there, you know, and we can't fight for you or you know. Um, make sure that you're, you know, you get the right people behind you and, and you're grateful for it because this, this, this sport is a, um, it's brutal. They forget about you quickly. You know, even if you don't lose, if you're in, inactive, you know, the boxing world moves on. So uh, make sure the people who are there for you, you treat them right. Love that, man. That's great. It's all about the relationships, right? A lot like life. It's all about relationships. Awesome. Well, you guys, uh, I gotta, Julian doesn't even know this, but when I first moved to LA, which was like three years or so ago, uh, Julian was over at the gym that I was uh, training at Wildcard West at the time. And I saw this guy coaching. I was like, man, my like, dream is to have this guy coaching me because he was just put so much intention and effort. He really cared so much, no matter who he's working with, a pro or some celebrity private client that you had in there, like it didn't matter. The intention was there. And my experience getting to have some one-on-one -on -one sessions with you and now getting to actually enter in your prize fighter university program and train through that. It's just, it's an incredible experience. And so anyone who's looking to become a better boxer, get in shape, I think your main things on there are build skill, strength, and confidence. I uh, mm -hmm. highly recommend it. And it's, uh, it's a discounter right now. It's in the description below. Um, anything else you want to share with the people before we let you go? Yeah, check it out. Check it out. You know, um, let uh, let us know what you think about it. You know, and uh, we'll be happy to come out with more with more content uh, if you enjoy the the program. Awesome, man! And you guys can do it all at home. It's all at home. Yeah, no equipment needed. Um, yeah. All right, man. Julian, thank you for your time. Catch you later, bro. Yeah, man. Thank you.